Good Morning Miramar, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m., right here, right now. Good morning, Miramar. Thank you all so much for tuning in this morning. We're so excited to have you all joining us. Today is a very special re-air and in case you missed it of Beyond Boundaries with Dr. Fleming. On today's episode, you'll be hearing from our panel about some great information concerning love and romantic relationships. So we hope you all enjoy hearing from Ebony Bryant and Brian Wilson, our special guests, as well as our three hosts, myself, Dr. Fleming and Alexis Fox. Stay tuned. Beyond Boundaries, we're really excited. And as all of you know, this is a really special monthly series where we talk about different topics concerning personal and interpersonal growth with different people in our community who can provide some insight on these topics. So this month, seeing as the segment felt, uh, fell on the day before Valentine's Day, we thought we would do all about love and relationships and all of those fun things. So before we get into our topic today, just want all of our guests to introduce themselves and we want to do a reintroduction to Dr. Fleming and Alexis, our um, co-hosts this morning. So go ahead, Dr. Fleming. Well, good morning, Miramar. As Danielle said, I am Shaniqua Fleming and I'm excited about this segment of Beyond Boundaries uh, because it is about relationships and relationships are so core to everything that we do. So it's going to be fun um, to just hear the different perspectives that are here today and also any comments that you might drop as to, you know, what are your questions about relationships, whether they be romantic relationships, work relationships, or any other kind of relationship for that matter, even those with your pets. Um, they, have, they have a say too. They don't always say it to us, but they, they do have a say yes. and they do have feelings. So relationships, all about relationships. Hi guys, it's Alexis with the City of Miramar's Office of Marketing and Public Relations. I'm looking forward to this episode. We're going to talk about dating as millennials. We're going to talk about what it means to professionals in the dating world. When do you let somebody know who you really are versus your brand or your professional image? So it's going to be a really interesting show. And it's a great segue into our first guest. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brian Wilson. Um, I'm the owner and founder of Fora New Dawn, which is a community and social change consulting company. So I'm very excited to be here. I've done work with um, uh, community mental health, with community mental health agencies. Um, I've also done work um, in Haiti and in the U.S. And it's all about developing um, relationships. I agree with pets, um, <laughs> with um, your religious leaders, with your loved ones, with your romantic partners. But the other one is with your community, developing a relationship with the larger community of which you're a part. So I'm very excited to bring that perspective. Hi guys, my name is Ebony Bryant. I am a local business owner and entrepreneur. I've owned several businesses over my life. Um, my current bread and butter is the ID Inc. And like Brian, similar to Brian, I do management for large scale events and programming for government agencies, nonprofits, and social enterprise. Uh, very passionate about that work because I think part of who we are as people is connecting back to the community, um, to ourselves, and to the people dearest to us. Uh, and so I've, I'm excited about talking about relationships, both personal but also professional, because it uh, creates the kind of experience and life that we all really want, free, exciting, engaging. Thank you for having me today. Yes. Awesome, welcome. Well, welcome. 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 So thank you all again for being here today. Um, yes. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. So, you know, we've kind of talked about a few different relationships so far this mm -hmm. morning. So I'm just gonna throw the question out there and then anyone can kind of jump in. Um, what what would you say the definition of a relationship is? Well, I think if you ask my bank account, you're probably with Tiffany's <laughs> and with <laughs> and with Neiman Marcus, I have quite the relationship with those places. Um, no, I, th I think for me, the definition of a relationship is an exchange of energy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, accepting and giving, ideally, <laughs> although we do have some unhealthy relationships. But a healthy relationship, from my experience, um, no matter with whom, uh, with whom you're sharing that moment or that time, is giving energy and accepting energy in ideally a positive way. But again, you can have some negative exchanges of energy and that still be a part of a relationship. Definitely. I like what Brian, I like what you said, giving and receiving. And I mm -hmm. think the part that many people uh, neglect to do is receive. And I think that's a part of relationships that when we can really, um, you know, ex you know, just 
own that part of it, then I think everything else blossoms from there because the receiving part of it starts with having a relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Loving yourself because you can't give others what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And you can't accept what seems foreign to you because there's always a tendency to push back and kind of reject it. So I, I love that part of it. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, I would say one of the hardest lessons for me with respect to relationships and career has been putting some of my career aspirations down long enough to be able to accept and receive love personally. Mm -hmm. um, I think I spend a lot of my time and energy building businesses and being in the community and all of that I love, but I found in the last couple of years, uh, if I'm being honest, the last year, uh, it's been super important for me to reconnect with those that are mo most important to me. Right. Detaching from my technology, mm. being present when I'm around people I love, that has a, been a learning curve for me. Um, so when mm. you said receive, that's it. I'm used to kind of doing things on my own and mm. white knuckling yeah. it. Um, but to be in relationship with people, friends, parents, my boyfriend, and know that they are there for me, that's mm -hmm. difficult to sort of get used to when you're used to doing things by yourself. Absolutely. I think that we've touched on a very, very important topic with the receiving of love. Sometimes that that rejection or kind of pushback to receiving mm -hmm. in a relationship comes from you feeling like you don't deserve it. I'm, just, I'm having a Beyonce moment. There's a quote that Beyonce says <laughs> on Lemonade <laughs> that says, why do you not allow yourself love? Do you think it's impossible for someone like you? And it's so true. Sometimes we feel like maybe our work or our school or our aspirations make it impossible for us to receive. But it's so important to Ebony's point to have that support system on these critical journeys in career and in, and in whatever it is that you're pursuing that you feel right. like love or the reception of love has to be shelved. Right. And I will say this, if you need a little bit of work in this area and being able to learn how to accept gifts, accept uh, love from other people around you, um, I'm an only child. <laughs> Spend time with an only child for just a little bit. <laughs> we believe we deserve everything. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I have a little anecdote. Um, I had a roommate who came home one day and said, um, I really want to go biking. And I said, oh, well, I don't have a bike right now, but we'll go buy one. An hour later, she comes back with a $500 bike for us to go and she's she's like this is yours i just want you to have this bike so we can go biking and i was like well thank you so much that is so nice we went biking for like 20 miles my butt was not happy about that all right here at the everglades it's a great trail but then i was telling my friends and people were looking at me like you accepted a 500 hundred dollar gift is it your birthday present is it? i'm like no it's, it's my tuesday afternoon present like why is this weird like of course i deserve a 500 hundred dollar bike and I just think it's it's important to spend time with people who who truly are are capable of accepting that blessing because it's a blessing to be mm -hmm. able to give. How great do you feel when you give a gift to somebody, or even just buy somebody lunch, yeah. or yeah. bring them a latte, and mm -hmm. you just get that smile on your face? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to rob somebody of that possibility of that blessing of being able to give you something, love, attention, or a five hundred dollar bike? <laughs> <laughs> I think Ebony said something that um, stuck out in my mind when you talked about, you know, professionally, you know, growing yourself and how that causes an imbalance sometimes in relationships. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was actually talking with my husband the other day and um, someone um, said to me, like, how do you guys do it all? And th the truth of the matter is we don't. Mm -hmm. um, and every relationship has moments of growth and moments of, you know, test, if you will. Sure. But the one thing that I've always, 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 I've always loved about our relationship and what I love about him is we don't find ourselves in a position of you're taking a back seat or I'm taking a back mm -hmm. seat. It's always a position of support. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that position of support requires that more is happening from one person as opposed to the other. Right. But sometimes it, it requires, um, there's no such thing as equal, right? And if you're measuring parts, then I think we've missed it. I um, mean, right. so, you know, there were points in my career where I, we, we changed positions of support. Yeah. There were points in my career where Jermaine was in more of a position of support. And so, and then there were other times when I moved to that position of support for him as things were elevating and escalating for him. Um, and I think it was probably about 10 years ago. Our daughter is now almost 10. Um, and I realized that we're both out of the house, you know, evenings on evenings. And I'm never going to get an opportunity to be a mother at this stage of their life. But I could always find another job. In fact, you know, mm. I'm living my dream right now. So, <laughs> and this wasn't it. So for me, it was, 
you know, you make decisions from your core and you make decisions based on those things you value and it will always return to you beyond what you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about that in relationships, I think it's a it needs to be not always reciprocal in terms of equal parts, but it needs to come from a place of you really, really do desire to give that. And also you feel worthy to right. Alexis's point from her lemonade quote. Listen, to shout, shout her out when I can, when I can. So, so I think that's, you know, as you say, you're working on that. <laughs> I would encourage you to just kind of look at that and say, you know, where are my barriers and mm -hmm. what boundaries have I created for myself? And are those healthy? And are they still serving me? Right. Because sometimes they aren't. And there's some relationships that, let's just be honest, they're not serving us anymore. Mm -hmm. But we hold on. Mm -hmm. I know I do. I, I have a hard time letting go. I'm so loyal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's getting to the point where you just realize, you know what? It's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's okay. Right, it's okay. And, you know, to that point as well. So another question I wanted to throw out there. What happens when you are unconscious in a relationship and let's say you know you're someone who loves to give and you you feel like you want to give but you get easily distracted and you mm. get distracted with everything else that's going on because I think something um, Ebony mentioned you know it's really hard to kind of balance it all yeah and there's so many relationships in all of our lives that demand pieces of us yeah I don't think you're ever unconscious though I think you're always aware of what's going on. I think we choose not to, we choose mm -hmm. to uh, pay more. attention to mm -hmm. those cues and clues that are coming, but we always feel it. Um, and I think that God gives us that internal um, compass, if you will. When things aren't right, we know it. We may turn a blind eye. Mm -hmm. And so when you feel, or when you, so I guess if I hear you correctly, when we choose to operate as if we're unconscious, I think it really does require us taking a step back and saying, you know, how am I really feeling? Mm -hmm. What's really going on? Because we don't really suppress things. I mean, we don't really get rid of things. We just kind of suppress it and it's still there. And so when we find ourselves in some relationships and we feel triggered, well, that's because we're suppressing a core value. Mm -hmm. And the triggers are happening because there's something there that we really want. And if you pay attention to the things that trigger you, they're probably in direct conflict with the things you really value. Yeah. And, and if you really look at that, it's like, why am I so upset? Like the other day I was talking, when things are not harmonious, that is not a good place for me because I am love. And at my core, my deepest desire is love. And so anything that is threatening love, it's gonna cause me to have that outer body experience, if you will, or, or dis-ease in my spirit. Well, and I think one of the things that mm -hmm. I, I hear people, especially millennials, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're always trying to do more, we're on the upswing of our careers, you know, we're just at that age where we're really building our lives, our families. And I think one of the things that really threatens that harmonious balance is this scarcity mentality. Mm. Yeah. And, I, and I tell people, if when you get to the point where you feel like you're juggling your relationship and your spiritual life and your, and your job and you're going to the gym, um, you're in the wrong mindset. Yeah. Because what you're doing is you're juggling this, this idea that you only have one place that you can direct that love and attention. Right. So I'm going to give my love to Christ or, or whoever your religious, you know, a, a spiritual um, practice is. I'm going to give my love to my partner now. And then I'm going to give it to my kids. And then I'm going to give it to my job over here. Right. And that scarcity mentality of I can only give love in one place at a time is just false. Yeah. In yeah. fact, if you blend them and if you're working toward that harmonious idea of you just said something. I'm all, I'm, I am love, I'm mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to work to advance my career and to become some you know huge superstar in the business world. I'm going to work because I love what I do right. and I love the ability to provide for my family right. and my loved ones. Right. And I'm going to church because I love working on that part of me because it, it helps me in my romantic relationship with my right. boyfriend. So when you start to think of things as not you know, the scarcity of I can give you this much and this much and this right. much, that's what gets us into trouble. Right, we mm -hmm. use or a lot instead of and. Absolutely. Alexis and uh, Danielle and I were talking about that before the year started, and I said, you know what, it's a year of and. I'm doing this and that, not this or that. Or that. Yep, right. I'm having steak and shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> we need a pillow with that embroidery on. <laughs> the year of and. <laughs> that's it. That's very funny. Um, something that you said that was interesting to me, I think a l both of you sort of pointed to a uh, mindset around mm -hmm. uh, balance. Because um, I think personally, when it comes to my work, um, I sometimes have struggled with how do I give all of who I am to the things that I love and the people that I love. Right. Um, and what ends up happening is, is I then have felt depleted because of it. 
Yeah. Uh, I work 12, 13 hour days. I can work anybody under the table. Right. I work on the weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what has what I've had to learn how to do more than anything else is love love appreciate and spend time with me more than anything or anyone else right that that's a great point ebony yeah. mm -hmm. um i too have you know have gone on that journey of trying to strike balance mm -hmm. and what i realize is it doesn't exist mm -hmm. yeah. and there's there's no such thing as balance right but there is proportion mm -hmm. um and you know as a professional woman who loves being a mother loves being a wife um, I realized that I'm gonna miss some things in life period I'm just gonna mm -hmm. if I look at it that way if I'm trying to have balance mm -hmm. but if I look at it as I'm gonna create proportion I'm gonna show up for everything that matters right mm -hmm. and so while there I'm not gonna make every football game I'm not I'm gonna try I'm not gonna make every oh yeah I better make every dance recital she's gonna <laughs> <have> <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean I'm not gonna make every single right. you know activity thing that my activity that my husband has but what I promised myself first and then it pours out to them, I'm not going to miss the things that matter. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if we live a life of um, purpose, meaning that we're not going to miss the things that matter, we will have the substance that we need. And the proportion will come. Right. right? So I, I look at it that way. Too. Yeah. And, you know, Ebony is one of the best at, we'll plan a lunch. And, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to go, you know, flip-flops. And we're going to go and have lunch on a Saturday afternoon. And, okay, we're going to meet at 1. Mm -hmm. Thursday, we're still on. Friday, we're still on. Saturday morning, we'll come and I'll get this text or I'll get a call. <laughs> How important <laughs> is this lunch? Because I have had a heck of a week and I would love it if we could just, or can we just go to your house and like snuggle on the couch and watch TV instead of being out with like the masses. <laughs> and the that, people. And more often than not, I will respond with, thank you so much for saying it. <laughs> I don't wanna have to do my hair this morning. Exactly. I don't wanna have to do anything. Different. And it's just that communication. Yeah. And I don't mm -hmm. feel any less loved. Our friendship is stronger for it. Right. Because exactly what you said, we're willing to talk about our needs, our boundaries. And I delight in giving her that space to take care of herself because you're taking care of my friend. Right. You're taking care of somebody that I love very, very much. Mm -hmm. And I think that communication is so key to be yeah. able to say, yeah. here's what I need, here's what I want, and know the difference between the two of those. I, I think, think also you struck a gold mine. yourself also when things don't always work out the way you plan. Yeah. Uh, I missed an important event last year for someone who was very dear to me. And actually about, it was so funny that she, I got an email about or a text about talking about relationships because this is, a relationship with a friend of mine who I've been friends with for many years and there was an important event last year where she needed me to be there and it was on the day that I had a big event for work um, and I think I'll always it's important for me to always be super transparent when I talk about these sort of topics mm -hmm. I will always I may always struggle with which thing I should have chosen mm -hmm. um, looking back I probably should have been there it was important to her and I it I needed to do this thing mm -hmm. for work I think what's important when those decisions happen is something would have would have sacrificed. I decided to do one thing, but I think what's important for me is forgiving myself. Um, Absolutely. Uh, apologizing when you aren't there in the relationships that you need to be. Um, being open to saying, I'm sorry and I will do better next time if I can. Um, and so it, it's always important to me to not necessarily try to be perfect, right. um, but be honest and uh, when you fall short and let people know that that if I can make an amends and do better in the future, I yeah. will. Yeah. Accountability and is key yeah. in, a, in, a, in forming any kind of relationship. And that also means accountability to yourself mm -hmm. and just kind of checking yourself to, to Brian's point, checking yourself, knowing this is what I need, this is what I want, and being able to distinguish between the two and mm -hmm. be honest mm -hmm. with yourself right. and then being honest with everybody mm -hmm. else. Because mm -hmm. right. at the end of the day, I've always felt like forgiveness was for me whether the other person is receptive or not it's me saying listen i dropped the ball in this true. way or another please forgive me because once you've released that now it's up to that person the mm -hmm. ball's in their court mm -hmm. you can't carry that anymore definitely and i think you know to communication I, and it's definitely something in me and my personal relationships that i've lacked because i have and I check myself on it because I have a tendency to want everything to be perfect mm -hmm. and to control <laughs> everything. So if I'm f falling in an area because I'm trying to hold another mm. piece and trying to juggle everything, I'll just keep it to myself and try and juggle everything until it all falls on the floor because I'm just like, I can't anymore. Mm. So it's really important to 
know that you're not going to be perfect in everything all the time. It's impossible. Like there, no one person can be perfect at everything all the time. And you, so much of life, you know, people are striving to do, you know, more in their relationships or their career to get to that certain point. But my question is kind of what is that point? Life is so much waiting, waiting for something, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. At what point are we really content with where we are? I think it goes to what Brian said about communication, and I think that's like the golden nugget, right? Yeah. Communication really does work in a way that if there are expectations, who knows about them? Right. So a lot of times, whether exactly. it's in personal, <laughs> really, right? Who know? I didn't know. You're in trouble for things you right. didn't know you I didn't even know you wanted that. So whether it's in your personal relationship or right. at work, if we set expectations in our head and we never communicate them, then it's on us, right? So we can't have these expectations of people and we've never communicated them. So, and this is no slight on the fact that, you know, you want to be there for your friends or your family, but it's also important for them to let us know, hey, it's really important, Ebony, that you're here for me. This right. means a lot to mm -hmm. me. And, you know, I, going back to your point of perfection, I used to, you know, I used to think about perfection in a way where I want everything all ducks in a row. I want everybody to call at a certain time and do everything. And I was, I was actually on a call with a client the other day, a coaching client, and, and she, you know, self-proclaimed perfectionist. And I said, why don't we reframe perfectionistic behaviors and the whole idea of being a perfectionist? Why don't we look at perfection, you know, being a perfectionist? I want excellence. I want a high level of quality and lots of accuracy, but I want it while still learning and living through mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. And so really the moment, the only moment we really have is right now. And so right. this moment for me is perfect, right? Absolutely. Um, and true transparency, you know, I, I didn't like me, I don't like being on camera. So that's why I like having the conversation, what? right? So you guys all hear this, right? <laughs> so I didn't. And so the first show, I was kind of like, hi, I'm Dr. Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, ridiculous. That's a really cute voice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it was like, wait a minute. If I'm just having a conversation with you, that's really what it's about. Absolutely. And I move people through conversations. So if I can't have a conversation, then you don't get authenticity from me. Mm -hmm. So conversation coupled with authenticity creates the perfect moment. And that's all we can ask for. Uh, for from my perspective, um, you know, if I had one message to give our viewers, um, <laughs> here's a message from Uncle Brian. <laughs> I think the way that you can reach contentment mm -hmm. is when you realize that you shouldn't love people and love the important people in your life, whether it's your pastor or your rabbi or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife or your, your best friend. You shouldn't love them in spite of their flaws. Mm -hmm. If you want to reach happiness and contentment, you love them because of their flaws. Mm -hmm. yes. You love them because of their flaws. I, I, I think that true love is thinking to yourself, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> and you infuriate hate me right now, but I would rather be angry with you than not angry away from you. And when you do that over and over and communicate and you communicate that with yourself and you yeah. forgive yourself and forgive the other person, mm -hmm. that's where true love kicks in. Because if you're expe expecting perfection, it's just never going to happen and you're, you're never going to reach contentment. Mm -hmm. And we do this all the time. I get so frustrated with religious leaders. We, we make these contracts with people. Mm -hmm. Like we tell them that you need to be perfect. We don't ever want you to do this, that, or the other. And the moment that they slip up, we put them out to pasture mm -hmm. because they have broken a deal into which they did not enter for, you know, with us. They did not sign on the dotted line. Yes. I agree. So I think um, that's that's my goal for contentment, is I want to love everyone without condition, truly. Yeah. I love you because of your flaws, not in spite of them. I would say contentment has a lot to do with silencing the noise. We've talked a lot about mm. the internal things, but we haven't really touched on, until what Brian just mentioned now, the outside, the social factors that impact mm. why we can't look past in spite mm. of or why we feel like we have to be perfect or why we feel like there has to be a, a juggle or a balancing act and I, I can only speak for me but like as a as an african-american woman as a young woman in my career I feel pressure to exceed certain expectations that have been set on me I feel I owe those things to my parents, Kevin and Pearl, and watching what they went through. I mm. feel like I owe it to be an example for other young African-American women and just women in general to hold myself to a certain standard that sometimes I find my contentment in that, 
rather than being content within myself. Mm -hmm. And it's a real thing. There are certain factors at play that make me feel like this can wait. Loving myself can wait. This mm -hmm. relationship can wait because mm -hmm. there's a bigger goal. I'm part of a bigger goal. I'm part of a bigger picture. And I think sometimes muting that out mm -hmm. can be so therapeutic mm -hmm. and so good for you and sometimes kick that passion into the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think contentment for me has been, uh, I just turned 35 in December, and I realized uh, as I'm, you know, sort of edging towards, uh, as I was edging towards mid-30s, my mother always rounds up. She says, uh, she says <laughs> when I turn 34, she's like, okay, now you're 40. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I get this. She is not invited to my birthday party. Right? <laughs> but I realized one of the gifts about getting older has been that the, the voice within my head and the chatter around me, I don't allow to affect who I am at my core. Mm -hmm. My values are true to who <clears throat> I am. It's how I move. It's how I make decisions. It's who I choose to spend my time with. And I, I hold those, those values very dear to me. To me, that's contentment, is being clear on who you are and responding to the world based on that clarity. Uh, it, is, it is paramount for me in my life at this point to know what works and what doesn't and set clear boundaries for mm. people and things, including myself, right? Because I'm Absolutely. quick to say yes to another board member meeting, uh, another committee I want to sit on. And that's also to say to me, Ebony, is this what is good for you right now? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to spend more of your energy here as opposed to going to the gym or going to bed at a normal hour or w also management of money right like that's been a big thing for me too you know do i want to spend money at this point or should i be saving to buy a house with um my helpful husband Sam? oh well um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so i just i think it's important to find balance for yourself but also people that you're in relationship with um and that to me is contentment is knowing who i am and making decisions based on how I move from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said, Doctor, about being present. Yeah. Be and you think you mentioned being in the moment. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're constantly striving for the things that we don't have, and we don't take time to just sit in our blessing and our joy. Mm -hmm. You gotta pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's an old movie, but Sister Act nailed it. Yeah. You wanna <laughs> be somebody, you got, and yeah. you wanna <laughs> go somewhere, <laughs> then you better <laughs> wake up and pay attention <laughs> but you do you pay attention oh, to the love <laughs> that you have around you yes. you know i, I want to pay attention to how much i love spending time with this woman who is one of my mentors and my soulmate right now <laughs> and i want to soak up that love i want to love getting to know and uh, you know these incredible people that are in front of me yeah. oh, so just sit yeah. and enjoy it for yeah. a second and that's so hard to silence that noise it is it so is. hard it's very very difficult but worth the effort yeah. i find amen worth the effort for me, I know we may go back and forth, potato, potato, but for me, it's, it's, it's beyond contentment. I, I've experienced some extreme moments of contentment and peace in my life, and for me, it's wholeness. Mm -hmm. And I think in wholeness is where all those parts, the sum of the parts, actually equal more, mm -hmm. right? So one plus one is 100. Ooh, there's synergy. There's, there's just everything, you know, everything that you're desiring is out there waiting to avail itself to you. But it does require communication with yourself first mm -hmm. and then outwardly to others and, and, and most importantly, staying connected with mm -hmm. God. Because I think there is always, you know, what we need. Right. So for me and for my, my tidbit to give away, it is discover that wholeness, live in that wholeness, be that wholeness and accept nothing less than that for yourself and your relationships. I agree. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes. So I wish that we could talk forever and so much <laughs> longer, but we do have to cut the episode here. Um, we thank you for all of you for tuning in to this portion of Beyond Boundaries. We hope that this conversation is helping you and, you know, can really help you in your personal growth in any area of relationship in your life. We'd love to hear from you, so follow us on social oh, media. We are at City of Myanmar on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Comment to us on this live feed. Um, send us a direct message. We'd love to include you in our next conversation. We will be back next month with another great topic about your instincts. Or, no, I'm sorry. 
luck or intention mm -hmm. luck or intention yes. luck or intention next month in march so we hope to have you all tune in then thank you so much for tuning in and remember it's right here in miramar bye, bye. <laughs>